Hello folks, welcome back to the channel where it is all about racing. I'm Mark, glad to have you. For those of you that enjoy my paddock tours of the lot of the six hours at the Glen, it was an absolutely phenomenal race. I hope those of you in the United States were able to view it or stream it live. For those of you in Europe, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to see it on YouTube in a couple of weeks if you haven't seen it already. It was one of the most interesting races we've had all year. There were intermittent rain showers throughout the race. The most turbulent one was in the last hour, which actually red flagged the race entirely. Featured a number of wrecks, including an injury to Sarah Bovey of the Iron Dames. I hope she is okay. Anyhow, in this video, we're going to take a look at this Porsche 917K, the number two, winner of the Daytona 24 Hours in 1971. Fill you in a little about the history of it. This car was designed by Porsche to exploit the regulations regarding the construction of 5-liter sports cars. It was a dihydral two-door coupe featuring a type 912 flat 12 mid-engine and 5-speed manual transmission. The car was introduced in 1969 and from what I read it was almost impossible to drive. However, in 1970 and 71 it found success winning Le Mans twice and many other races including the 24 Hours of Daytona. This model was that car in the baby blue golf livery. The drivers of the car, which is featured on the opposite side of the spark base, were Pedro Rodriguez from Mexico, who won eight races in this car and died racing a Ferrari 12, 512M in 1971 at the age of 31 years. Jackie Oliver from Belgium was his partner. The winner of both Le Mans and Can-Am died in 2023, age 81. Well, if you know me, you should know, and it's no surprise that this is a Spark model. It's virtually all I collect. Comes in this standard Spark box. However, it is Daytona themed. It's black with a black base, acrylic jewel cover, and, and a cool picture of actually the 24 Hours Daytona, but not the one in 1971. It's clear on both sides. The back features a black background with the Daytona track on it. Now, the car itself is phenomenal in virtually every respect. Paint and finish are excellent. Wheel detail, exceptional. Interior detail, great decals. I mean, <laughs> there's virtually nothing wrong with this car. You know, it's hard to find fault with Spark cars anymore, and that's why I primarily collect just Spark in 143 scale. Now, I do also collect TSM, and in some cases, HPI and Look Smart. But Spark make up the majority of it. They make so many cars. They are so good. They're all virtually flawless in every respect. This one is no exception. Guys, take a look at the cabin. Phenomenal cabin detail. Here's a cool look at it from the front. Headlight detail is excellent. Every opening is nicely done. As I mentioned, the the paint, the finish are exceptional. You can see the panel latches there. I mean, really nicely done. There's another good look at the interior from the front. And we'll take a look at it again from the other side. Here's a cool look at it from, I guess you could call it, well, it is the driver's side. The other side is really the passenger side. You can see there's really, there's really, really good cabin detail. It's absolutely exceptional. A little bit of glare from the camera and the lights here. I apologize for that. The rear of the car is exceptionally detailed. Tail lights nicely done in plastic. You can see the exhaust, a lot of the support struts. Notice that this car doesn't really have a rear wing. It's got more of a spoiler, you can see here, with I guess you could call it a mini wing attaching both panels of the car together. Engine detail, you can see clearly right there. Now I'm thinking you may have fuel caps here and here on the car. I could be wrong. Well, folks, that wraps it up. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Please give me a like and subscribe.